my god, do you see that? <laughs> I feel like a wizard. I have a friend. Oh. Say hey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today we're playing with Elite Cosmetics. This is one of those squeaky clean brands, the ones that we don't have to nitpick and search through all the ingredients and everything, thread the needle and say that it's clean. These brands often come with the caveat of sacrificing performance. There's typically a compromise. And so I don't want to come into a review with that mentality, but at the same time, I've just been burned so many times. So I'm going to try and keep my head on straight here. This is not a first impression, but I haven't really done like a full day wear test on these products. I have three products from Elite Cosmetics today. They make a full range of things, but I really wanted to try mainly their complexion products today. So I have Refresh Fresh Tint Foundation. And it comes in glass with this little bamboo right here, but we also have a little bit of plastic. Cream Revealer in the shade CN2, and that is their concealer, and it looks like that. I have hair in my nose now because I just cuddled with the cat. And I also have their, what is this? Glowing, oh, it's a powder. We'll look it up, but it's in this bamboo thing and it is their, Huh, they're setting powder. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, it's all over my pants now. Well, we're off to an auspicious start. Oh my goodness gracious. Ha. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this on my face. I'm gonna kind of talk you guys through the experience as it's happening. We'll talk coverage. We'll talk just general interaction with the product. Then I'll, you know, take a break, put my whole face and makeup on. We'll come back, talk about ingredients, packaging, the brand in general, and then I'm gonna do a full day wear test, okay? I'm gonna do like a full eight plus hours, and then I'll check in with you guys at the end of my day and tell you whether I think that you actually should invest your money in these products because they don't come cheap. So guys, without further ado, Let's jump in. Okay, there, okay. So I got this in the shade RW1, and experience has taught me to shake these kinds of things. You shake almost all foundations because they tend to separate, but especially natural foundations. Okay, I'm gonna start with like three pumps like that, and I'm actually gonna like spread it out on my face first. I don't typically do that, but I like don't want this to dry so fast that I can't spread it out and then we're screwed, you know? I think that this is sort of like medium coverage. I also had to guess at the shade because they don't, I don't think, I mean, they might sell this at like Whole Foods or something, I'm not sure, but I, uh, I ordered mine online, so. Also, I think I ordered it when I was a little tanner for the summertime, so it's a little bit yellow, but that's okay. We can always make it work. I have a nice little jitteroony right here. Thank you, hormones. Woke up to that the other day. Actually, I woke up to that after trying a new foundation and primer the other day, and I don't want to blame it on that because I don't like to think, it's kind of like when you get sick because someone sneezed next to you yesterday. Like, I like to think the incubation period is a little longer than that. I've been changing a lot of things about my skincare recently, just testing things out, so who knows? The bottom line <laughs> is what do we do with something like this? We don't pop it. We put some zit patches on it, some tea tree oil, we roast it with the, the light stem, but we do not pop it. It will only make things worse and make the pimple stay on your face a lot longer and look a lot scarier. Okay, let's take a close look here. All right, we're talking like light, light coverage. Like it almost doesn't matter that this isn't a perfect match for me. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like a skin tint. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot of coverage to it at all, but it does go on really evenly and it has less of an oily presence on my skin than I expected it to. It is definitely dewy over oily. I would say that it's drying down on its own a little bit more so than like the Glossier skin tint, which is sort of what people think of when they think of a skin tint. It's like almost no pigment, mostly texture 
on the skin, but um, but yeah, you can see it went from like being very, very bouncy dewy to just a little bit more dried down. And I think that that has to do with the fact, like I said, that there are fewer stabilizers in it and it does have mineral pigment in it. And so as the sort of suspension materials, I'm not a chemist or anything, but as the suspension materials kind of soak into your skin, what's left is more of like a powdery finish, but not super powdery. We're going to go in with the cream revealer here. I got this in the shade CN2 and something weird happened. I don't know if you can see that. When I dipped my finger into it, it kind of came off in these weird clumps. It doesn't make it unusable or anything. It's just kind of, kind of interesting. So it's not really like a happy to cooperate at body temperature kind of product. And <laughs> I definitely got it in a little bit too deep of a shade, but that's okay. For the wear test, we're just looking at performance. And if you are complected like me, understand that CN2 is probably going to be a little too dark. But <laughs> it is coming off in little chunks. Like I have to rub it in really hard on my face to like break up these little clumps. Did I just get a bad one? Like sometimes people who are really big fans of a natural brand like this, because I find that like people who want to wear very, very, like I call it squeaky clean beauty, they tend to find like one brand that they really, really love. And then they know everything about that brand. And so they'll come into my comments and they'll educate me a lot of times on a brand that I'm unfamiliar with. And so if someone is really familiar with Elate, you know, they might tell me like, oh, I have reordered the cream revealer like five different times. You need to store it at a certain temperature or it's gonna do that clumpy thing or whatever. Like this did ship to me in Austin, Texas when, you know, it was much warmer outside. I've had this for a little bit. Who knows? Could be user error. Again, it's not making it unusable, but those little weird clumpy things, like I can definitely notice that when I'm putting it on. So like I said, the foundation didn't give me like an oily vibe. This gives me an oily vibe, not in a bad way necessarily, but it's not giving me like stabilizers. It's not giving me dimethicone. It's not giving me, I dry down on my own. It's definitely giving me like, this is kind of oily and it's gonna stay kind of oily on my skin all day, but we got coverage. I think I look a lot better than when I started. <laughs> I think that that's actually really pretty. Experience again has taught me that this is the kind of thing that goes on really, really beautifully and then degrades quickly. Again, trying to give this the benefit of the doubt because these things do, they really vary brand to brand and I need to give it as much credit as I can and it looks really, really beautiful right now. So I'm gonna let that just soak in for just a second kind of like dry out on its own before we put powder on top. As far as comfort is concerned, my skin feels really nice. Like it doesn't feel like the RMS, the new foundation. When I put that on, I could feel the weight of that product. They used a lot of really emollient oils to give it a thick texture instead of using something like a lightweight silicone. And so when you put it on your face, you really feel that texture. You really feel that weight. And over the day, it gets greasy. And this isn't doing that. It still goes on nice and lightweight. So bamboo container. This is actually a pigmented powder. I don't really know if I meant to order a pigmented powder. It's not really my style usually. So just gonna kind of be as gentle as I can so that we're not piling a ton of dryness on top of a ton of dampness. Just tippity tap. So in my experience, powders can be too simple. Usually as long as they're not like pure silica, like the RMS, I hate to just bag on RMS, but like the RMS unpowder is just one that I, it comes to mind when I think about something I really don't like. Usually a mineral powder is kind of beautiful in and of itself. So hopefully this gives me all those nice kind of blurring vibes. You know, there's like a reason that even Hourglass is a mineral powder or like bare minerals, you know, it has such a reputation for being so good for um, aging skin is because minerals, when they're finely milled and you make a powder out of them, they tend to just be really beautiful and blurring on the skin. It's also the same thing goes for like a mineral SPF. In and of itself, the texture of those minerals is going to be really blurring and smooth on the skin. So it kind of does most of the work for you without you having to add a whole bunch of like, you know, nonsense to it. So I was a little afraid, honestly, putting this powder on here because I was afraid it was just gonna like soak up tons and tons of liquid, but that's really nice. I will say it's too dark. 
It is too dark for me, but that's okay. Oh my God, do you see that? <laughs> I feel like a wizard. Um, That behaves more like makeup than I was expecting it to. Okay, I <laughs> tried not to, but I, I did come from a place of expecting to be kind of disappointed. And that actually looks really, really pretty. <laughs> so hopefully it's not too good to be true. Let me zoom in here and show you guys before I jump off and do the rest of my makeup. Okay, so underneath my eyes is actually smooth. Who knew? Uh, I think it's because that concealer doesn't build up a lot of texture on your face, you know? So it just kind of acts as a little receptor for the mineral pigment when you put the powder on. And I mean, I'm shocked that like, yes, I have coverage. I probably could have gone with like some color cancellation first, but um, my under eyes look smooth and they look hydrated, which is like not a thing that happens to me that often. I usually have to work pretty hard for that. It covered that zit in a way that doesn't look cakey. That's amazing. Um, you can definitely see the color difference uh, against my complexion and that is just pure guessing and getting it wrong kind of thing. I'm gonna take a look when we look uh, deeply on the website and everything to see if um, they carry like a translucent. But uh, but yeah, you can definitely see that the powder is pigmented and that maybe it's not perfectly working for me. But I like the texture of it. I like the foundation. The foundation is so comfortable. Like I'm really, really surprised at how comfortable it is because the first time that I put it on, I put it on with my hands thinking it was like one of those, like a BB cream or something. And it didn't go on smoothly at all. And so uh, I definitely think sponge is the way to go. Okay, so I'm gonna jump off. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup real quick. And when you see me again in like three seconds, we will deep dive on all the other stuff about this brand. A few of you guys suggested last time that maybe I wasn't wearing enough blush. So um, I hope that your needs are met. <laughs> I think I may have gone a little bit far, but I'm just Aries just right. All right, so this is the rest of my makeup. I feel like it went on pretty smoothly as I would expect for a medium coverage foundation of any kind. Anytime you put on a medium coverage foundation that tends to have a little bit more of like a dewy texture to it, you can sometimes run into the fact that it wants to grab other products on top of it, but I feel like that powder, without putting too, too much on, did a good job of helping this like glide on in a nice way. I didn't feel like it was like soaking up like big clumps of blush or bronzer. If you see a lot of product on my face, bronzer and blush wise, that is entirely my doing. The only thing I will say, like I love how glowy I look right now and I love this kind of like, you know, it's a texture, but it's also just kind of like a, um, you know, a shimmer thing and sort of tricks the eye. The only thing that I'm not loving is I feel a little bit exposed underneath my eyes. And as soon as I started putting makeup on over here, I had to kind of, you can see, like reapply the concealer in order to cover that spot. And I feel like it looks really conspicuous now, which is not my favorite. So first impressions, I guess first impressions, I've used these before, but like first impressions on this particular face of makeup, I will say I like the foundation a lot. I like the powder a lot. The concealer is already disappointing me just because there's a point to a concealer. It's to conceal and I need a little more pigmentation. Okay. So let's chat about the brand. Oh, there are two foundations. There's the Refresh Foundation and the Uplift Foundation, and they're on the same page for some reason. <laughs> so it looks like there are more shades than there are. That is so confusing. So actually the Refresh Foundation comes in one, two, three, eight shades. And yes, I did get the lightest shade in the foundation, which is surprising. So if you have paler skin than I do, or even my skin tone, then this is still gonna probably be a little bit too deep for you on like a normal no tan kind of day. This is only $32 and you get quite a bit of product. I know only $32, but Clean Beauty, the whole price thing just kind of goes out the window. Like even when you're shopping Clean Beauty at Target, a blush is like $20 and you're like, really? So you get 1.69 ounces here. This is definitely a lot larger than most prestige foundation bottles that are usually an ounce or like 1.1 ounces. And so that's a really, really good price for that. Ingredients wise, we have a lot of carrier oils. We have sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, uh, argan oil, coconut shell extract. So that's a different, I think, from coconut oil, or they probably would have said so. There is uh, silica and zinc oxide, titanium dioxide in here that are going to dry down on the skin. Bentonite clay, again, an oil absorber. So this doesn't have anything that like throws off any alarm bells in my brain in it. It doesn't have any essential oils. It doesn't have any fragrance to it at all. 
and it comes in, like I said, glass, this little bamboo guy, and then this plastic top. But still, you know, they've made an effort here. I got the cream, the creme revealer in CN2, and there was one shade lighter that is very pink and it is CC1 and that's probably what I should have gone with. You know, going for a concealer that's a little bit pink is okay for me because that's going to have a little bit of color cancellation to it uh, for my under eyes and that is what I should have done. I wish you guys knew how often I have to edit out just wiping my nose. Ah, so the cream revealer is $26 and you get 0 0.10 US ounces or three grams of product. So a little bit more expensive pound for pound on this. The ingredients we have triglyceride is the first one. And then we go into castor oil, jojoba oil. There's mica in here, but they do harvest their mica sustainably. Coconut oil, rice bran wax, candelilla wax, argan oil, bamboo stem extract, coconut shell extract, and your pigments. So this is super, super simple. There aren't any stabilizers really in this. And I feel like that's exactly what it feels like to interact with it. It is just very oily. Um, it's basically just oils that keep it solid at room temperature and pigmentation and not really enough pigmentation for my liking even if it were the right shade, <laughs> but it comes in this little bamboo package. And then this little pan, which is so tiny, isn't it? That's a tiny little package. The pan is replaceable. So you don't have to keep buying the little bamboo guy. And the replacement pan is $18. So it's, it's less. All right. And then the loose powder, the veiled elation is what it is called. And they have it in bronzer, mattify, glowing, and luminous. None of those give me a real description of what they're gonna look like, except the bronzer maybe. And I think that the bronzer is more of just a pigmented powder for deeper skin tones. The glowing is the lightest one. Yeah. So the actual powder itself with the bamboo container when you first buy it is $32 and you get 10 grams of product and then you can replace the inside of it and refill is $25. So um, I think that the main thing, and I don't really know how to solve for this, it might just be a packaging situation, but like my issue is that every time you open this, you actually lose quite a bit of product if you're not really, really careful. And <coughs> Mm. And I understand they wanted to go more minimal, but it's like, if you're never going to have to replace this lid anyway, why not make it one of the ones that has the little slidey window in it? Because this is definitely like wasteful, I think, of the actual product. Like it's all over my hands right now and I'm being so, so careful. The bamboo, the way that it's been, I don't know, turned, it's, it fits snugly, but it's hard to get it open and closed. And so you do end up losing powder that way. It's just a disadvantage of that kind of packaging, I feel like. Ingredients wise, the powder is mica first, uh, bamboo stem extract, argan shell powder, boron nitride silica, and iron oxides and ultramarines. So pigmentation. It's pretty simple. It goes on really nice and smooth. I don't think that the shade range is really enough. <laughs> I know they don't even mean to have shades, but like, why not have a translucent one? I, that's what I would have bought, but they don't have one. It seems odd. Also, I just want to go ahead and address something so that it's not like loaded up on in my comments. A lot of times, when I test these kinds of brands, everybody wants to come in my comments and be like, why didn't you test the pressed powder foundation? I have dry skin. I'm not going to test a powder foundation. Pretty much full stop. Like every time I've done it, it looks bad. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, you should really be more conscientious of the people who have different skin types than you. But to that I say, how good is an endorsement? <laughs> or a review at all of a product that's not meant for my skin. <laughs> so it's like, if I love it, but we have very different skin types, then like, what difference does that make for you? And if I hate it, it's because my skin is dry. And so it doesn't really apply to you anyway. So um, I don't, there've just been a few kind of handful of situations where people really are like, not that kind about it. And they, they're like, why wouldn't you, why won't you try a powder foundation? Why won't you try a powder foundation? It's just not something that agrees with my skin. I am spending my money on every single one of these products. So um, I'm not gonna buy something that I'm not gonna use. You know, I experience has taught me that like a powder foundation is just going to get cracked up and dry 
dry and uncomfortable on my skin. They do carry them. They're between $4 and $42, depending, I guess, on the size, the replacement pans and things like that. And they do have eight shades of the pressed foundation, but that is why I didn't go with that. Now, that to say that there are powder foundations and then there are like room temperature pans of like cream foundation. Those are some of my favorites. Stick foundations and foundations that are solid at room temperature are some of the best ways I feel like to make a foundation that is like a clean foundation, clean ingredients that wears really, really nicely in a lot of different like weather and stuff like that because it already has this sort of really stable uh, texture to it. And when you put it on your skin, you warm it up to put it on. But then when it kind of, you know, comes back down, it sort of stabilizes at your body temperature. And that's why I love like Westman Atelier, Chiara Wise. I even really like the Honest Beauty uh, cream foundation for my skin, but um, they're, <laughs> they're different. They're About Us uh, follows this little lotus pattern and they have their impact, ethics, community, future, and mission. They say, we believe that each individual effort will create a global impact. At a late, we encourage creating opportunities for small shifts in daily rituals and mindset that everyone can make. So basically they are trying to make makeup that makes people able to take one more step in their day that makes a difference. You know, it's like going and picking up litter on the side of the road. Like, are you changing the entire world? No, but you've made a positive difference. And they say through these changes, we can start to affect a greater change. We all have the power to do something and every, every contribution, no matter the size or scale counts. I agree. Our products offer innovative solutions to the otherwise wasteful practice of the beauty industry and fill a gap in your beauty ritual. Our aim is to allow our customers to buy well, use less and love themselves and the earth more. I love this. I love this. I love being able to share a brand with you guys, especially if I end up liking it, that hits all the marks. They're giving money back. They're doing their really darndest. I mean, this is definitely an interesting approach, putting everything in like, you know, sustainable bamboo, and then you replace just the inner pans and stuff like that. It is one way to do it, but they are definitely going above and beyond outside the box. I want to give them credit where credit is due. I think that it's much more economical for the user to be able to replace individual pans. I think that there are like very, I don't know, greenwashed ideas like Lila B, I'm looking at you, the fact that they're like, oh, we made this like heavy metal packaging and everything, but like they didn't follow through and like make replaceable pans that you could buy. You have to buy that big, heavy metal compact every single time. Like that's just really silly to me. So they've come at this a really good way. I think that so far, at least for the foundation and the powder, the performance is there. The concealer is just not my preference, but I'm going to wear it for the rest of my day. I have a lot to do today. So I feel pretty. I mean, I definitely think that this is like a makeup look I'm happy wearing for the rest of the day. It's very, very pretty. It does just give me a little bit more texture than I would want, but that might not be a concern for you. It might be more important for you to have very, 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 very simple ingredients on your face and to find something that performs because it's very rare um, than to have something that makes you look completely perfect. So that said, guys, we're going to jump into the wear test today. I'm going to wear this for eight plus hours. I will check in with you at the end of my day, no matter what happens, whether it's great or abysmal. And we will talk about whether or not I recommend this and under what conditions and my final thoughts, etc. So see you guys at the end of my day. Hey, homies. Um, is it too bright? I don't know. Either way, it's the end of my day, guys. Time to film my final check-in and let you guys know how I feel about my makeup. So, for those of you who don't know, this is what I look like when I'm not on camera. Welcome to my bespectacled self. It's also why sometimes my makeup is blended less optimally than I would like it to be is because my eyesight's not like perfect. So anyway, I just got off of a call on FaceTime where I could see myself the whole time in low light. So I'm gonna bring you into that world real quick, okay? Can you see how shiny I am? And I don't mean shiny like oily, I mean like I look like the Tin Man a little bit. Over the course of the day, the fact that mica is the leading ingredient in this powder has done very much what like Root Pretty does, where yes, those minerals are so good for blurring your imperfections and giving you this really, really nice surface without a whole bunch of stabilizers. But for whatever reason, it just kind of combines with the oil on my skin and maybe some other, you know, products that I have on my face that are not completely mattifying. And we just end up with this very non-human kind of sheen that's on my face right now. And it'd be one thing if like my neck looked like that too, but it doesn't. And it almost, 
almost gives me that thing that like I returned the lawless luminizing powder for, which was, am I in focus? I returned the lawless luminizing powder because it turned my face slightly pink. And I don't know whether that was mica or what, but yeah, this does give me a little bit of this like odd pearlescence that doesn't really give me skin vibes. It gives me like Tin Man vibes. So I was going to say I absolutely recommend this powder, but the fact that the colors are so odd, like I don't think I had a different choice in their powders than to order this one, the like luminizing one, that kind of would stop me from giving it just like a universal recommendation. As far as the way, then we'll do, we'll do a full zoom in, but as far as the way that the foundation actually held up, it held up really, really well. I don't feel any weird like breaking up or anything. My face is like really hot right now. I've been in like in a hot room. Me and my husband sat outside for a long time with the dog today. I don't have that thing that I complained about with the RMS where like it never per like completely dries down and you feel like if you like touch it with your nails, you get a whole bunch of like oily makeup on yourself. I don't have that. Yes, it's a little bit, obviously, it's not a completely mattifying foundation, but it doesn't feel sludgy. It doesn't feel like it's in danger of just like breaking up and going everywhere. So uh, the lightweightness of it and the, uh, the nice like, you know, limited emollient ingredients um, combined with the mineral pigments. I feel like it did hold up. The only thing that I would say is like a miss across the board is this shade matching. Like I did a poor job with the concealer, but I wouldn't have recommended the concealer based on the formula to begin with. It just doesn't really give me enough concealing. So I would just choose a different concealer. Let's see, what would I pick? I think that the Fit Glow, if you're looking for something that has this clean of ingredients, Fit Glow is going to have more coverage, basically, um, for having such good ingredients. Certainly not an inexpensive product, but I think you get a lot more product in the tube. I mean, that said, it held up nicely for what it is. If you're not looking for a whole bunch of coverage from a concealer, it's fine. I should have gone with the lighter shade. The fact that this is the lightest shade in the foundation, and I ended up with such kind of like a disparate kind of line here where you can see from some angles and some lighting more than others um, that I just, it's not a good match. You know what I mean? It doesn't match my ears. Like it doesn't look like my skin. I think that that's the shortfall of this is just that the eight shades in the shade range just don't really get the job done. So I feel bad because I feel like we're so close on Elate. You know, I, I want to try more products from them. I might try uh, their like pot foundation. That's like a cream kind of. I mean, it all seems so close to perfect, but I just can't necessarily recommend this as like a universal recommendation unless you're sure that it's going to match your skin tone. That's the biggest thing here is like, it behaves exactly like they say that it's going to. Um, it behaves very well for uh, a natural product made of organic ingredients in most cases, but um, I would definitely like, you know, be aware that the lightest shade of powder, I do think that the powder still, the performance comes down to a shade matching situation because the lightest shade in the powder is this and it is super, super, luminizing. So yeah, um, I did want to say for something that I kind of forgot to mention uh, in the earlier part of the video, they offer samples very similarly to a lot of the uh, really, really like squeaky clean beauty brands out there. I think it's so, so cool that they do that because they are genuinely like on an overall holistic mission to reduce waste since they don't want you to buy something that's just gonna make waste if you're not going to like it. So you can go on their website and you can order like small sample sizes of things. That's why certain things looked like they were like $4 versus like $45 because they're buying the sample size. So let me do one more zoom in uh, and I will uh, let you guys see kind of what we're working with here. So like I said, things are so close to perfect here. I mean, look at that. Even for like a cool day, I feel like this held up so, so nicely because um, I was out in the sun and stuff like that. I do feel like I got a good test, but like, you know, that's not bronzer. That's the difference between those two spots right there or like here and here. Um, you know, the, and when I watched the footage back, it was even more obvious that it just isn't the right shade, especially when I was like putting concealer on this guy right here. I mean, it just was so glaringly obvious in the camera that um, the lightest shade of the foundation and even the like golden shade, the lightest golden shade of the concealer aren't a match for me. So, you know, for what, it was designed to do, which is be a really nice, lightweight, healthy face of makeup that will wear all day. I'm very impressed <laughs> by 
its performance and its ingredients, but more people need to buy it so that they have the money <laughs> to put more shades in their range. I know it's very entitled for me to say, you should uh, you know, always have a foundation to match basic white girl, which is like what I am. But it's not so much that I'm blaming it on the brand, it's that I want to recommend this so much, but if you have my skin tone or lighter, I just don't think that there's like a place for you in their range. It's an awareness thing, no shade, I just want you guys to know. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, that's my full review on the, uh, the Elite Cosmetics, Elite Beauty. They're kind of both online. I don't know, they call themselves Elite Beauty and Elite Cosmetics. Either way, uh, that's my review. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I really tried to make this, like, less binary and more about just, like, how I genuinely feel about this. If I were a makeup user who only wanted to buy one foundation or get really into one brand, I think that this is really, really beautiful if you can find your skin tone in it. That's all. So if you thought that this was helpful, if you found it valuable or enjoyable, do give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate that. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. I hope you're having a lovely self-care Sunday. I hope that this brightened your day in some way. I love hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, guys. I love you. I love you so much. And I will see you on the next one.